<laughs> Holy cow! Damn, I was not out. expecting that. <laughs> Hey guys, so uh, I've kind of gathered us all here because uh, I've got a cool idea for us to kind of build something. We're all woodworkers, we all do 3D printing, engineering, metalwork. I think it'd be a really cool idea if we make one tool that's pretty much universal to all trades. Uh, a mallet. What do you guys think? I love it. That sounds like an awesome idea. I need a definition for a mallet. It has a long handle, got a head. And you use it to hit things. Jeff, what do you think? Uh, I've actually wanted to make them out for a while now. So it's, this is a good uh, thing to stop me from procrastinating doing that. That's the name. <laughs> <laughs> That's the channel. All right. So uh, William, our, uh, our resident doctor. Well, what are you thinking? So I have an idea. I'm not gonna say it now because it kind of pushes the boundaries of the definition, but it's still <laughs> within the it's still within what Hunter said. So let's wait for the reveal. In All right, right, fair enough, Mikey. I, what's going on in that head of yours? Oh, so much, so much going on in my head. I think I'm gonna go with with all wood. I have some nice pieces that I picked up from a from a local wood supplier. Um, I might do some metalworking in there. Uh, I'm thinking. I have, have an idea. All right, cool. So, what are you thinking, Hunter? Uh, I'm kind of limited to hand tools right now, so uh, I'm probably just going to make everything like, kind of the old-fashioned way, just with the uh, good old power of my hand and uh, some hand saws. Yeah. Just make it simple. Maybe uh, I'll use some CNC to carve something into it. Making mallets with robots. Super simple. Yeah, I got simple. a three-in-one 3D printer, a laser engraver, and... Uh, CNC here, so might as well use it. I'll see you guys uh, in a month when it's uh, hammer time. Yeah, good luck. Hammer time. Hey. <laughs> okay, folks. Today we're going to be making a mallet. We have some cutoffs from a live edge table. Actually, this table right here. Um, we're going to use this to help make the handle. And uh, in between these two, we're going to have this piece of mahogany which we have the perfect size piece right here to go in between. That'll make up our handle. The rest of the mallet, we're gonna make out of this beautiful piece of walnut. So we're thinking for a four by four square face mallet there, about five inches long. We're gonna make the whole thing about nine inches uh, with the handle being about five inches. And I think we're gonna put a little insert here the thought is to put a hole here and then maybe fit that with a little piece of copper. So this is going to be the layered handle here with the two pieces uh, from the live edge cutoff and the mahogany in the middle. It's going to look a little bit like this. And then for the top, we're going to have a hole here. This is how we're going to join the mallet. So we're going to have a hole where the handle will run through all the way and there'll be a gap here and here and we'll actually drive some wedges in here and that's going to expand the handle and then once we glue it it's going to lock everything in place that's the thought let's get to making it Okay, now they're all clamped up, we're going to let them dry for a while. Come back tomorrow and get it assembled.
So for my mallet, I'm going to be making Thor's hammer Mjolnir. It's a little bit of a complicated design because we have these compound angles and some detailed carvings. So I think the easiest way to do this is going to be to split it up into different parts. And then at the end, we'll put it all together. Here's what I'm thinking. We'll start off with a simple four by four piece of maple off the main body. It's a little bit scaled down, but I think if we keep it the original size, it'll just be too clunky and not very usable. Then we'll create two end caps and glue those to the main body. And for the handle, it's just a simple dowel, which will get inserted into the main body. We'll drive a screw from the top for some extra strength, and then we'll cap off the top with a round disc. No idea if any of this is going to work, but let's go give it a try. Alright, so all of our parts are cut, and I've also added these small dowels. I'm hoping that this will keep the end caps from sliding during the glue up. Then for the top, we have a counterboard hole for the screw that will be covered by this cap. And then same thing on the bottom for the handle, so time to start assembling. So here's the thing. I have about five mallets already, so I don't really need one. And I don't really feel like making one for myself just because that's just another thing to keep around. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm actually gonna make a percussion style mallet, one that you would use on like a floor tom, a cymbal, a timpani, things like that. And I'll just give this one to Jeff because he is actually a percussion player and I'm not. So normally I would head to Home Depot or Rockler Woodworks or a lumber yard and try and get things for this type of project, but I'm just gonna head over to Michael's. Let's see what we can find. So apparently Michael's doesn't sell wooden dowels anymore. So off to Home Depot. So here's the haul. I think everything cost me about $15 and I should be able to make at least two pairs out of this. tool for this job would be a blunt tipped curved sewing needle. Fortunately I didn't have one, neither did the store, but I just put this guy in a bench vise, hit it with a mallet, and then made it nice and curved. The reason for the curve is that we we're going to want to go into this unfinished section, pop out the end, pop out the outside, and then 
we'll thread back through all the way around for finishing. This is a technique from surgery. So if you put your scissors directly against the actual thread, just bury it all nicely. So that is one finished mallet. We could add some finishing touches. So I think I might do a little bit of leather wrapping. I'm currently in the process of moving. So I don't have all my tools. Anything that I really need, I'm gonna have to buy and have a second one of. So, uh, this is going to be done pretty in, much entirely with hand tools. Uh, I bought two Japanese hand saws. I might do the handle as maple. The walnut will just be in the middle. The handle will come right through, almost like a, what you would call like a full tang on like a knife or something. We're just going to wing it and see how it goes. So I took the mallet out of uh, the clamp and I can't remove the handle from it. So uh, unfortunately, there's not much else I can do. I tried hammering it out through the top a little bit. Yeah, it does not want to move and it does not have much glue on it. So I believe it's just the pressure from the outside piece that's actually holding it in. So that kind of throws a little wrench in the plan with what I wanted to do for the handle up here because I wanted to split it in half and then uh, and then put a, a walnut wedge in there, but I guess I can't now. Um, I'm just hoping that this uh, this stays together well, and then one time when I'm hammering with it, it doesn't fly off. I'm gonna be doing a little cutting with the uh, saws again, just to square up the mallet head, and then I'm just gonna break off the sides and round it off. It looks a lot better than it was before. It actually looks like a mallet. Not worthy of Thor, but uh, worthy of maybe a plumber. <laughs> All right, guys, it's uh, finally time for it to show off for project, and I'm really excited to see what you guys made. So uh, who wants to go first? I think uh, Jeff probably did a, a smaller scale mallet, something uh, artistic, but still useful. For my mallet, I did decide to make Mjolnir. Yes! <gasps> Holy cow! Wow. Holy crap. Basically, I split it up into parts, cut all these angled, cuts on my miter saw, did a whole ton of carving. I actually found this aluminum tubing that was like the perfect size of the wooden dowel I was using. I cut them down into sections, slipped them on over, and then filled in the space in between with leather. Wow. How much does it weigh? I think it takes a god to lift. Wait, yeah. Jeff's worthy. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, Jeff, you have inspired me to uh, come at this with a whole new level of, of, of wow factor for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm in thoroughly impressed. I'm glad you guys like it. I think Mikey went pretty traditional and thinking like pretty wooden construction, maybe like three piece design. Um, I had big plans for mine. Um, I did not do them. Um, <laughs> This is what I made. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. The color of that walnut just pops. It's so oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. And the figuring yeah. on the on the face of it. Yeah. So it's made with uh, some local Oregon black walnut. 
and uh, mahogany for the center part and in the handle. I then used a, a nice double wedge uh, in there to separate it. And then one That's little awesome. feature I added was a nice, uh, it's really hard to see, is this uh, copper, copper ring. Oh, copper um, ring. Uh, yeah. It was almost exactly what I was picturing, except the center was maple. <laughs> yep. Only difference. <laughs> That's awesome. I have no clue what Hunter made. The one place that I could woodwork was this little uh, little workshop that's right here through this door. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is it. Oh wow, it that looks very, awesome! It looks very nice. Yeah, this is three inch, uh, three inch pieces of uh, maple and walnut. And when I was actually gluing these together, uh, my handle got stuck inside, and I could not get it out for the life of me. I was using everything i was bashing it with uh i bashed it with a sledgehammer at one point yeah yeah i, I think that thing's staying put yeah it sounds yeah. pretty secure it looks great hunter and that just goes to show you if you have a little bit of effort and at least a corner yeah once i get my garage i want to redo <laughs> i have a feeling that in a couple months uh of having my garage and all my tools back i'm gonna get very angry at this and I'm just going to immediately make another one. <laughs> Will mentioned that he wanted a definition of a mallet. So I feel like this is going to be completely left field. Like, I'm thinking a meat hammer or mallet of some kind. Like, I was I, thinking that too. Drum roll, please. <laughs> that's a different thing. I was not mallet. expecting that. <laughs> These are good, nice, like percussion, timpani slash marimba mallets, and they're going to Jeff. So one is leather wrapped, the other one is just stained with mineral oil. Um, the mineral oil is a little bit slippery, so I actually <laughs> slightly prefer the <laughs> slightly prefer the leather wrapped one. It must have taken forever for you to wrap that yarn. It, yeah, it took a while. This one, which was the second one I made, I accidentally made much bigger than the other and then <laughs> had to undo a ton of it. They look professional. Well, I think in the hands of Jeff, they're going to sound amazing. I oh, agree. Can't wait. We all had four very unique and different approaches. <laughs> Me and Mikey's were very, very similar. It was the power tool version that looks really handmade, and it was the handmade version that looks like it came out of a machine because it's so true. square. That's really funny. <laughs> That's true. I loved seeing all this. I think this was definitely a success and one we're gonna we're all gonna use see you for next month's challenge.